All right, folks, so here's yet another um, pistol-related topic that's been on my mind for a little while and um, concerning uh, different skill sets, basically, within the realm of uh, pistol shooting, right? So um, a lot of the fundamentals will carry over um, from pistols of any kind, any kind of trigger mechanism, to your rifle shooting, your shotgun shooting, your bolt action, your semi-autos, all that. A lot of the shooting fundamentals will carry over between different platforms and different um, types of guns, absolutely. But um, one thing in particular I've been thinking about a lot lately is um, the different skill set between semi-automatic pistols and revolvers. And why I believe, I think that they are definitely a different enough skill set to warrant um, talking about. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So um, to illustrate this example, I got my... Uh, 586 here, love this gun, and um, my recently acquired Breda 92X Compact, this one right here. I'll be doing a review on this one um, fairly soon once I figure out what's going on with it, but um, it will work adequately for what uh, I'm trying to illustrate here. So, um, so even even within just regular, I'm going to say auto-loading pistols, semi-automatic pistols, whatever you want to call them, they're all the same thing to me. Um, Auto-loading pistols, um, basically you have the, the 1911, so you get the single action only triggers, you have the double action single action, which is what this is, and then you have the striker fire pistols. So all of those people are pretty much familiar with, and um, every, every single one of those trigger types is a different skill set. Um, now you're saying this might be obvious because you kind of, every, every different um, pistol is going to be a different experience, a different skill set, a different kind of uh, platform to get uh, trigger time on and to get more proficient at, to get better at. Um, so I, I definitely understand, you know, uh, that kind of frame of mind. Um, but it gets it gets really really different though when you go to a revolver, just you know, for obvious reasons of it's an entirely different operating mechanism. Even though um, a lot of modern revolvers are going to be uh, DASA guns, um, you know, double action, single action. Um, it, it's just the, the ergonomics and the operating of a revolver. It's, 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 it's so much different from any of the auto-loading pistols beyond, beyond just the trigger type that uh, it, I believe it is a entirely different skill set and one that needs a lot of practice to be, um, be as proficient with as, as most people are proficient with, uh, say, semi-auto pistols. <clears throat> so, um, to give an anecdote, I can't tell you how many times um, I've, I've, I've uh, a lot of my friends I've, I've shot with um, have not really shot revolvers all that much. They're they're used to, you know, our service sidearms, the M9s. They're used to striker fired pistols like Glocks. They're used to 1911s, that kind of thing. Every kind of auto loading pistol you can think of. They're used to that, and those traditionally have heavier triggers than a revolver, at least in the single action mode, right? So this is already cleared, but this one, this, this gun single action has a heavier trigger than this revolver revolver will in single action. Absolutely. hundred percent. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's very, very noticeable. So, um, so watching somebody pick up a auto loading pistol versus say, um, how they pick up a revolver you can you can really really tell if someone is unfamiliar with revolvers also the heft of these things these things are um, hefty they have a different balance they have a different kind of uh, different kind of grip to them that they're, they're just so different in so many ways um, that I think it's like I said before it's a different skill set so um, let's go first off to just the shape an angle of the grips on these. So if you look at these, they are quite different. This one, the Beretta, you know, it, I like to use it as a kind of um, uh, general example for how uh, auto-loading pistols are going to be. So this one, as you can see, the frame there is basically kind of like a straight, almost you know, very little angle to it, but kind of straight up and down, maybe like a little hump in the back here, and it fits kind of naturally in the hand. Whereas a lot of revolvers have a much different kind of grip to it. You can see it's much more angled, it's much more uh, curved, 
right? It kind of sits in your hand a little bit differently, at least it does to me. Um, and, and the weight and balance is completely different. So um, seeing, seeing people operate these when they haven't shot revolvers before, especially big revolvers, um, it's, it's a telltale sign that there is absolutely something different. Um, now operating these, it's also a little bit different because there's no, obviously there's no um, slide to rack. Um, it, and you may think this is, this is a minor point, but um, even for me, I've been tripped up by my own experience with revolvers in the sense of the cylinder release on Smith & Wesson's versus Colt's, and I'm more familiar with Colt's, um, are opposite of each other. So I've actually caught myself going from um, my, my Rock On revolver, which I had in my other video there, that one has a Colt style uh, cylinder release. So I caught myself when I was trying to unload this, like pulling back on the on the, on the cylinder release here. I was like, what the hell's wrong with this thing? I was like, oh, duh, I need to push, it needs to push forward on a Smith, not uh, pull back like a Colt. So um, that that definitely tripped me up. And you, you think it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a minor thing, whatever, but it, it absolutely can trip you up if you are not um, paying attention. So. Also, the um, operation with revolvers is that a lot of them have this um, this kind of modern style DASA exposed hammer, which a lot a lot of well, I'd say most revolvers are right now. Um, is the fact that you know you can cock it back single action manually by yourself, and you can also decock it like I just showed there. Um, some auto loading pistols do not have that feature. Obviously, you can't do that with a striker fired pistol. You can't just manually cock it yourself you have to rack the slide um, unless you have a DASA gun with an exposed hammer like this you can also manually cock it but most people don't do that at least for these kinds of guns then single action of course um, it should already be cocked but if it isn't I guess you could um, if you're the kind of person that carries it in that manner but uh, that that's all technique related to single action stuff that's that's way that, that's a whole different topic but anyway um, the fact is you have a lot of control over the gun, basically, which I think is um, um, valuable, to say the least. So, Also, I would say the, the double action on a lot of revolvers out of the box is going to be heavier than some double actions on auto-loading pistols. And I will say that the double action on this one is actually pretty nice and very, fairly light, but I've had some other pistols like the... Uh, a Rex, uh, Rex Zero One. That thing has a absolutely insane um, double action pull. It is so so heavy, uh, very creepy, very stagey. I, I I didn't like it very much. Um, a lot of the Sig Two Two X series pistols also have pretty heavy double action triggers, and uh, I wouldn't call them smooth. But almost every double action I've pulled on on every revolver I've had has been fairly predictable and fairly consistent in terms of trigger weight and staginess and creepiness. They've all been um, pretty good to say the least. They're, they're, um, it inspires confidence in my ability if I needed to, to rapidly pull double action, boom, 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 all through six shots if I really, really needed to. Um, if I had to do that with double action pull, every single pull on a auto loading pistol, my trigger finger would get very tired very quickly and I would, I would have serious doubts as to my practical accuracy with those. Unless of course you're running something that's way out of, way out of left field like a SIG P250 for instance where that thing is only double action and uh, has a very consistent very good trigger pull but that's that's an outlier to most um, conventional uh, auto loading pistols. So, um, But on the note of triggers the single action next is something that absolutely surprises the heck out of people. Um, I can't I can't tell you how many times I've handed somebody a, a revolver and I said, hey, you want to try it on single action first because double action is pretty heavy. So they go to single action and they're not they're not at all used to how light the trigger is. So they're you know they're they're doing they pull the hammer back and they're getting lined up on target, getting lined up on target, and then they're they're about about like this, and it goes off, and they're like, whoa, whoa. You know, totally blown away by how light that trigger is, because um, you know they're used to auto loading pistols. So um, that's another thing. Yeah, you, you really do have to get used to. Um, a lot of people will say that you know, a lighter trigger is better. A lighter trigger that's what, that's what you want. I'm going to put all these trigger mods in my gun to make my trigger lighter and better. Lighter trigger is not always better. 
um, especially for a duty weapon. It's not, it's really not always better. And I have been caught myself on numerous occasions, even with this gun, for how uh, freakishly light the, <laughs> the single action is on this gun. It does make it very easy to shoot for certain situations. Like if I was going to do um, you know, a lot of really precise target shooting, and I really, really, really just wanted to line up and you know, take my time and you know, do all that, um, a light single action trigger is um, quite handy for that. And, and it just it just feels good. Um, but in a high stress situation, a um, defensive situation, which I don't know why you'd be using single action anyways, but these kinds of things happen, um, you really do have to be careful with a lot of revolvers on a single action because they are quite sensitive and very, very easy um, you know, to, to, to set off when you're not quite um, on target. Now that goes back to fundamentals. Of course, you should not be um, you should not be putting pressure on the trigger until you're perfectly lined up and ready to shoot. But that doesn't always happen. So just something to be careful with. So the so we went over the um, differences right for revolver shooting and how I think it's a different skill set. Um, you know, I've seen plenty of people that can fire auto loaders just fine. Um, accurately, quickly, um, great trigger pulls, great ability to uh, operate the weapon. Then you hand them a revolver and they're completely lost. Even though, even though they might have the good fundamentals that might, um, you know, transfer over to revolver shooting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a one-to-one -one, um, transfer of skill and knowledge, experience, uh, muscle memory, all those things to shoot a revolver accurately and well. So, um, you know, you, you could you could make the argument that every single pistol you have is is going to be a different weapon system that you're going to need to get experience on. That's absolutely true, but it's even more so when you go from auto loaders to revolvers, and um, it uh, it definitely takes a bit more work. It, it's almost like for you know for my personal um, experience, shooting red dots on pistols is a completely different skill set from shooting iron sights on pistols completely different and uh, I'm definitely noticing that and I'm having trouble adjusting to that I need more trigger time behind uh, pistol dots to really, really be comfortable with them to be on the same level of proficiency than I am with iron sights and that is absolutely the same idea same concept with auto loading pistols going to revolvers or maybe you're more of a revolver person uh, you know and you're trying to transition to more conventional um, auto loading pistols, it is a different skill set. So um, you'll definitely need some practice. Um, nothing, nothing can make up for range time and range practice, and just getting trigger time and rounds down range. That's the best way, always, of course. But um, it certainly helps to have a nice, um, hefty piece, you know, a good quality uh, firearm, and something that you can, you know, really, really effectively train with. So. Um, I really like this 586, freaking excellent revolver, and um, this is this is pretty much my go-to revolver that I shoot now. Um, I have a Colt Trooper Mark III six-inch barrel that I also like, but that one, that one, to be honest, it, it's just I don't know what it is, but this one is more comfortable to shoot. Um, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe I've secretly been a Smith guy this entire time, and I just refuse to accept it because I I grew up around Colts. So, but anyway, um, that's also topic for another day but yeah um so the main points like i said um uh, going from auto loaders to revolvers different skill set even though they're both pistols they're both handguns you may have the fundamentals down right for uh, pistol shooting it, it is completely different skill set and it does require practice and time so um just something to keep in mind and definitely a a, a good kind of what i think uh, approach philosophy to these kinds of things is um different skill sets different platforms, um, they just need practice. Some things will cross over, some things will not. Some things are gonna need more practice, some things will need less practice. So just be aware of these differences and you know, not everything's the same just because it's labeled a pistol and just because it's a pistol, you know, with like maybe a red dot and it's the newest, latest, greatest thing, does not necessarily mean that you yourself are going to be as proficient with it. So um, yeah, just some general advice there and something that was on my mind, so I figured I'd talk about it. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing this because this thing has been awesome with one little problem, but uh, 
that'll be addressed in the video when I uh, when I make it. So anyway, that's all I got to say about that.